I spend a lot of my time, both professionally and outside of work, trying to provoke changes to help reduce CO2 emissions. I make videos here on YouTube around this kind of topic, the steps that we could take at home or more broadly. And that's really to help people help think through how they might reduce emissions in response to climate change. Sometimes you hear this kind of work described using the phrase net zero or carbon neutral. And we've taken some steps at home that will reduce our emissions substantially, but I don't tend to use those phrases in talking about our house. And why not? Well, simply because our home isn't carbon neutral yet, and it's not net zero yet, and I don't really care. Wait, what? Isn't that the goal? Why am I asking other people to take these steps if I'm not willing to make our home carbon neutral? Why campaign for change if I don't reach net zero myself? Well, let me explain what we're talking about and what the goal really is. First, let, let's try and define net zero or carbon neutral. When we use these phrases, we're basically saying that the CO2 emissions that we produce through day-to-day -day activities are equal to uh, the CO2 that's removed in the world around us, whether it's by plant life um, as it grows and it puts on biomass, or through other carbon sinks that are absorbing CO2 from the atmosphere, which might be soils, land in general, or water. So basically trees growing above ground or in root systems below ground, or CO2 dissolving in places uh, around us. We tend to talk about this at a national or international scale, and we have a target to achieve net zero in the UK by 2050. When we achieve net zero in the UK, and globally, that's not the end of the story. It just means that we're stopping making things worse. If we're gonna get greenhouse gas uh, concentrations to safe levels, we need to extract more CO2 than we produce. So yes, bouncing out our emissions with what is, uh, what is taken out of the atmosphere is a good step, is a good thing, and should be a target. But in reality, it's a step in a much longer process. So let's go back to our home. How might we get to net zero in our home? Well, we don't have loads of land to plant extra trees to extract CO2. So the goal is to reduce emissions by as much as possible. We might then look to become a bit of a power plant by generating our own electricity. And that could match the amount we use over a year. So if we generate as much as we use, then maybe we could kind of class ourselves as some kind of net zero. But actually that's not really true. We, we would still consume things that have emissions and any electricity we use overnight would still have some emissions, at least for the short term. Just because we might generate some from a solar panel at home doesn't mean that we can discount the emissions that were already, that were already generated by using electricity that's not solar powered or wind powered, I guess. And if we have been really pedantic about this stuff, we'd need to still count the embodied emissions of the solar panel and everything we buy anyway. So I guess the point I'm making is it's not really possible to achieve net zero on our own without either asking someone else to, to use some land or waiting for someone else to do something on our behalf. And I'm not actually sure that this should be our goal. Our target doesn't need to become some kind of CO2 profit and loss calculation. It just needs to be that we need to reduce emissions as much as we can, as quickly as we can. So for our home specifically, um, we don't generate any electricity here because we don't have any solar panels. And that's partly because uh, it feels like our roof is not in the best state. It probably needs replacing in the next few years. And um, we may consider doing a loft conversion one day, which might impact that as well. And actually, solar panels haven't been a priority for us. And why is that? Well, well, from a CO2 perspective, that's because the, the electricity grid is already doing a good job. It's already cleaned up substantially in the last 15 years, and it's now a tool for reducing emissions. It's a tool for decarbonisation. Someone else, somewhere else, has built a wind farm, has installed solar panels, or runs a nuclear power station, or runs a clean-ish gas power station, and things are getting better and better with more big wind, offshore wind coming online in the next few years, with more solar panel investment, with more interconnectors to neighbours and with more stored clean electricity across the country. So 
Generating our own electricity would be great. It would help power our home cheaply, but it's not actually essential for reducing our, our emissions. The grid is doing that on our behalf. So what about heat? Most of the energy that we use in our house, maybe 80% of our energy is for heating. If we were reliant on a gas supply to a boiler, this would be the majority of our emissions. But instead, we have a heat pump. A heat pump that uses clean electricity to generate heat, but also significantly reduces the amount of energy we buy overall. So where our home used to purchase around 14,500 kilowatt hours of gas and electricity each year, in the last year, we purchased 5,886 kilowatt hours of electricity. A 60% reduction in the energy used by our home just by installing a heat pump. And as the electricity grid continues to reduce in emissions, with a clean power plan, meaning electricity will be very low emissions by 2030, our home will continue to reduce in emissions too. With a gas boiler in 2020, our emissions were about 2.6 tonnes of CO2. The grid has reduced in emissions since then by about 12%, and our heat pump has reduced the amount of energy we need. So our emissions in 2024 were about 1.2 tonnes of CO2 a 54% reduction. Next year, without doing anything more, our home will be lower emissions. The year after, lower again. And we now have a path to zero emissions at home. And you know what, that's why I'm not too bothered about not being carbon neutral already. We will get there. But I, I guess there's a couple of things to know. If we wanted to move more quickly, there are a few more things that we could do. It is an emergency, maybe we should do these things. We could improve the insulation in our house so that we need less energy for the same comfort. If we did this, it doesn't, how, it doesn't matter how quickly the grid decarbonizes, our emissions would be lower. There are a couple of things we could do to improve insulation, but a big change could be costly and it could be fairly disruptive. Because we've already electrified and because the grid is heading in the right direction, we could get to very low emissions without upgrading our insulation too much. The next thing that we could do is that we could use electricity at different times. We could try and hunt for the windy times or we could use electricity overnight when the demand is lower and when the grid tends to be cleaner. And this would help the transition away from high emissions electricity and help accelerate emissions reduction for all of us. But because the grid is heading in the right direction already, we could get to very low emissions even by using electricity whenever we wanted. And then actually to, sim to help simplify using electricity at those different times, we could install a battery. We could program it to charge up when the grid is clean and to discharge when the grid is dirty. Again, this would help with the transition uh, to intermittent electricity generators like wind and solar, buying cleaner electricity, minimizing our demand when it's dirtier, and with time of use tariffs, this could be a way to cut costs too. But because the grid is already doing this kind of thing, we can get to very low emissions without a battery. Next, we could install solar panels. Uh, that could be a good thing to do and that could help us power the heat pump or heat, hot wa heat up hot water or fill up a battery. And this would mean our local electricity supply was cleaner and it means that we would buy even less uh, electricity from the grid, again accelerating our emissions reduction, but we would still be reliant on the grid for some of the year when the sun doesn't shine. And we know because other people are putting solar panels and wind turbines on the grid, we can get to very low emissions without installing our own. Do you see the conclusion that I have come to? You see, if we remove fossil fuels from our home and actually from across our lives, if we electrify everything, so for example, remove a gas boiler and a gas cooker, install a heat pump and an electric or induction hob, we, if we do those things, we can have a path to very low emissions without major insulation, without a battery and without solar panels. Even if those things would help us get there a bit quicker. Removing gas, removing fossil fuels means that we're heading in the right direction without them. Okay, let's just check for completeness. completeness. Let's imagine that we do install solar panels and a battery. The battery would mean that we might be able to use more clean electricity. So let's assume actually that the emissions intensity of the electricity that we use 
would reduce by 25%. We would then be generating some electricity that we still needed to use. And a standard domestic solar panel system might be, let's say, three kilowatts. And that might generate around two and a half thousand to three thousand kilowatt hours in a year. So let's assume that we could use three quarters of what was generated. So up to 2,250 kilowatt hours, we would be buying that much less electricity from the grid. So our 5,900 kilowatt hours from 2024 would become 3,600. And those grid kilowatt hours are that little bit cleaner than last year because of the battery. So our emissions at that point would be around 550 kilograms of CO2 in a year. And that would be another 55% reduction in emissions from today, or a total reduction from 2020 levels of 79% from a home with a gas boiler. And we'd be exporting some electricity, maybe up to 750 kilowatt hours. So we could say that we're reducing someone else's emissions by around 125, 150 kilograms, another 5% reduction in emissions. And this is, this is great. There is some value in doing this. But as the grid cleans up, um, a home without solar panels and a battery, but with a heat pump, would get there too. It would maybe get there a few years later. So let's just take a slight step back. In doing this calculation, I'm almost convincing myself that we do need to get solar panels on the battery as soon as possible. It is an emergency and reducing emissions more quickly is essential. So maybe I need to think through that a little bit more. But the final thing to say about solar panels and a battery is that it may help with, with CO2 emissions in uh, reduction in the short or medium term, but it would also help reduce costs substantially particularly with a heat pump and if you're also charging a car from the panels too. So those 2,250 kilowatt hours that we haven't had to buy from the grid might have cost us around 500 pounds a year. We might have got another 50 pounds exporting to our neighbors. And our battery might have meant we could have saved lots on the cost of running a heat pump. So a fully electrified home with a heat pump and with a mini power station on the roof, charging a mini battery under the stairs, would be an 80% reduction in emissions and at least a 500 pound reduction in bills, but possibly even more, and would have a path to very low, if not zero emissions. This is starting to sound good to me. But back to the point of the video. Our home is not carbon neutral and I don't mind. It wouldn't be carbon neutral if we installed solar panels and a battery, although it would be further down that path but we do already have a path to very low emissions because we don't have a fossil fuel powered heating system anymore. And because our electricity supply from the grid is going to keep getting cleaner and cleaner in the next few years. Yes, we could accelerate that path by getting solar panels and a battery and by improving insulation, but we might have to do a fair bit of work to the house to get there, which could be disruptive, particularly if it's not essential in reaching our goal. Installing those extra bits of tech, um, improving the building fabric would reduce emissions and it would really help reduce our costs, but it's not essential. So trying to get to a carbon neutral home is a good ambition and we should do this by minimizing the amount of energy we need and a heat pump is a step change in that process. And then we can rely on yeah, national government and businesses doing their thing by building out a low emissions electricity grid. And if we've removed any fossil fuels from the house, we already have a plan of getting to zero emissions. And we could call that net zero. What do you think? Do you come to the same conclusion as me? Some people will conclude that solar panels and a battery should come first is there a better investment than a heat pump and make more financial sense? But do you see where I'm coming from in saying that they're not essential in, in reducing our emissions, even if they are helpful? I'd love to know what you think. But overall, whether it's a phrase like net zero or carbon neutral, I don't think it's too relevant. We simply need to make steps to reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. And every step in that direction is a good one. And we should be clear that using more electricity is not necessarily too much of a problem. Cheers.